So the last part here is our uh, specular process and this uses a more old school like non-physically based uh, rendering workflow. Um, you know more like specular and gloss things like that. Uh, this doesn't have roughness or metallic or anything like that. So we're talking about two main different material types dielectric which is like non-metal non-conductive and conductive or metals uh, and these differ because a dielectric material will have like an inverse color from its diffuse color and a conductive material or a metal will many times have a uh, similar spec color as its metal in order to just amplify it since it uh, you know reflects a similar color that you see um, because the actual diffuse color is more like black when you're dealing with a uh, physically based rendering workflow but in the original old school workflow of spec and gloss uh, you know that's what you have to do to make it reflect more of its own color first is uh, dielectric materials like skin and cloth and stuff will reflect the light around it but if it's a you know, if it's a more neutral lighting like uh, indoor fluorescent lights or uh, you know just general outdoor uh, kind of cloudy day or sunny day you're gonna see somewhat uh, white highlights on dielectric materials and you inverse the color in the specular area to get the spec highlight to kind of balance out between the two color ranges between spec and diffuse. So since a lot of the diffuse colors are browns, that's why you see a lot of blues and you know bluish greens in the spec colors here. But the metals, the, con the conductive materials like the suspender clasps here, uh, the little fasteners on the boots down here, they are still similar in color to the diffuse. It's just a kind of a little bit of a brighter, more intense uh, version of that to get that, that color to pop a bit more. So this spec folder is just a folder over top of the diffuse and all the same masks are in here as are in the diffuse. And to start with, there's an inverse layer which is basically just a hue saturation layer so you can see over here and the hue is taken all the way to one end or the other to basically invert the color and the areas that are masked out on here are the metals the conductive materials because of the reasons we just talked about where they, they should reflect more of the color that you see in the diffuse in this type of spec workflow so that's why those are masked out from being inverted in color uh, so as you go through here with the dielectric materials, uh, you're basically just using the masks to section off, you know, that material. And for like for the cotton twill trousers, trousers, for example, uh, there's just the levels in here to darken uh, that inverted color. Because if not, it would be the same uh, intensity as a diffuse, and it probably would reflect too much light. So just using a simple level adjustment. So you can see over here to darken it. And that's being done throughout all the dielectric material sections as well. So same thing for the cotton shirt, just the levels. And I used as a layer mask in there, I used the object space uh, green normal map since that has a top down lighting. And I just wanted to balance out the top down lighting that was in the diffuse and kind of take that out in the in the specular because you want uh, the entire material to reflect the same amount of light even though in the in the diffuse you're kind of highlighting the tops a little bit more with the actual lighting itself so you're just going through each material and looking how you can balance out the lights and darks to get a more uniform you know reflection on that from that material uh, when it's in the engine so uh, you can see in in spots like the pants, I left a little bit more of the shading from the AO and the uh, baked light maps in the uh, inside the legs here, just because you're not going to 
you know, see that a whole, whole lot uh, reflected, reflecting light on its own, like right in front of the camera. So I just want to keep it a bit darker to help with uh, the read on the form itself. But again, the shirt is pretty balanced overall. And uh, you can see in different areas like the, like the skin. Here is the main level adjustment. That's the original just being inverted up here. And then the actual level adjustment takes it down darker. And then I use an extra level that I called highlights to make some of those forms pop, like the forehead, the nose bridge, um, the cheeks, and a little bit on the, the chin down here. That may just pick up a bit more light because uh, they're a bit oilier, oilier <laughs> more oily. <laughs> uh, you know, they're just going to reflect a bit more light. So I painted those uh, in there with some extra uh, highlights. Same thing on the tops of the hands and the fingers as well. Uh, areas that could be painted out to balance more. Um, you know, we could look at the the uh, suspenders. Where are those at? Cotton suspenders. So here's the main levels. But since this had that uh, you know top light, I also wanted to balance that a bit. So I used the same uh, object space green normal top down lighting, but just inverted it as a layer mask. As you can see without that, it has a bit more focused lighting still as that top lighting. So I used that to just invert it and you can see the control you get by using those levels on there. And I just added one more levels on top to bring the whole thing down a bit more similarly to the shirt since they're both cotton. So other areas if you have more unique sections that you want to paint out you can you can start out with you know a main levels uh, like the shirt or any other any other uh, material in here and then put one on top and paint paint out or paint in certain spots uh, with another levels on top of that. So that's the basics of uh, you know the spec setup in here. Two more things that deal with spec. One is this spec fake under the diffuse here. This is basically a way to use the spec we just made up here and do control A, control shift, shift C to copy the whole thing. And there's two sections in this spec fake, multiply and color. So I'm just gonna, I just pasted the actual color, the whole thing I just copied here and then up in the multiply section pasted two of them up here. So I'll turn off spec so you can see this. So I turn off spec fake you can just see the diffuse. You should be able to see various areas popping a bit more when that spec fake is on like they're reflecting some of the dielectric materials like skin and the cloth ref reflecting a bit more of the white light that they may reflect in a more you know neutral lighting environment and we're kind of just basically using the spec we made to balance out with the diffuse color and kind of make that white pop. So you have the color here, which is just a normal blend mode. And up above, you have the multiply group with a black solid color beneath. And this whole folder is being multiplied on top of the color in order to merge with the color of the diffuse to get a white simulated reflection on the diffuse colors. And I just use a body and a skin because I wanted two different opacities. So the body has a 35% opacity and the skin has an 80. And you can see it's just masked off with the object space green map for the, for the skin and similarly for the body. And these are just desaturated versions of the spec color here. 
So when you combine those together, you get that simulated reflection. So once I have this, I usually re-export the diffuse with diffuse and spec fake turned on, and the diffuse folder gets changed to a linear dodge, which basically you know adds it to that spec fake in order to get that simulated white reflection. To export the spec, turn off spec fake and just turn on spec so you don't have like a double spec effect happening, and then export the spec itself with your uh, spec action, your save action over here. Lastly, we have this spec power up here. I'll turn the rest of these back on. So spec power is just a way to pretty much intensify the effect of the specular highlights based on the camera distance. Uh, it's similar to a gloss setup, uh, but it's more just based on the way that our shaders work because we're pretty limited in Unity for Lexica on what we can do with spec. So this is a way we can just boost it and control it a little bit more based on the camera distance. So this is just a bunch of solid colors. As you can see here, this is a, you know, it's all grayscale and just a certain level of brightness that ranges from about eight brightness to like 30. So this is his hair, and that's like a 15 brightness thing it was. 13, I changed it down a little bit, just didn't rename it. Um, but each one just has its own, you know, solid color in there. Like here's skin, which is at 15. Okay, I labeled it wrong. Uh, metals, or, you know, shiny, uh, like a shiny leather. So here's like his leather pouch. I wanted that to be a bit shinier. So I made that a 20 brightness level versus the cotton pants over here would be much, much duller. So I have all the cotton in one mask and that's only an 11 uh, brightness level. So each of these gets its own, or based on what the material is, you can combine them, like I did with the cotton there. And this spec power map gets placed into an alpha channel. And that alpha channel gets baked out when you save your spec map as your 32-bit uh, spec map. So that's about it. Uh, I think we've gone over most of the main parts of texture from your prep to the main structure to uh, the fuse and your specular setup. So I hope that was helpful and uh, good luck making the characters.